In the annals of cinematic history, few films have left as indelible a mark as The Road. Released in 1953, this classic production stands as a testament to the enduring power of storytelling on the silver screen. As we delve into the folds of time, one might ponder, do you hold a cherished memory linked to this cinematic gem? Alternatively, what enduring qualities do you believe make the robe a timeless symbol of the film industry? Now, let's unravel some intriguing facets of this cinematic masterpiece. Set against the backdrop of ancient Rome, the robe weaves a narrative tapestry that explores themes of faith, redemption, and the human condition. This historical epic, directed by Henry Koster, unfolds with a compelling simplicity that resonates across generations. As we traverse the corridors of memory, we invite you to share your most cherished moments or personal experiences connected to this film. What scenes etched themselves into the fabric of your recollections? And what emotions did they stir? We eagerly anticipate your stories and memories in the comments below. Delve into the cinematic journey that is the robe, where each frame is a brush stroke on the canvas of storytelling. Join us in celebrating the enduring legacy of this film that has become an intrinsic part of the cinematic landscape. Share your insights and reflections, for your voice adds to the rich tapestry of collective memory. The Robe, a cinematic classic released in 1953, unfolds a compelling narrative set against the backdrop of ancient Rome. Directed by Henry Koster, the film follows the journey of Marcellus Gallio, a Roman tribune whose life takes an unexpected turn when he wins Christ's seamless robe in a fateful dice game at the crucifixion. Driven by guilt and haunted by the profound impact of this sacred garment, Marcellus embarks on a transformative quest for redemption. The film artfully weaves themes of faith, conversion, and spiritual awakening, all while offering a cinematic spectacle of epic proportions. Richard Burton delivers a captivating performance as Marcellus, infusing the character with a nuanced blend of conviction and vulnerability. The robe is renowned for its pioneering use of cinemascope technology, marking a significant advancement in filmmaking during its era. Its lush visuals and grandeur contribute to the movie's enduring legacy. This timeless tale of faith and self-discovery has left an indelible mark on popular culture, inspiring subsequent works and cementing its status as a cinematic masterpiece. In the production of The Robe, the filmmakers ingeniously repurposed sets from Algiers for the Galilee village of Kana, where Marcellus Gallio encounters Peter after a wedding. These sets, standing on the studio back lot for 17 years, later found a place in Demetrius and the Gladiators, the sequel to this cinematic classic. The well with its distinctive old broken columns became a recognizable feature in both films. Amidst the cinematic grandeur and enduring themes, it's noteworthy that Richard Burton, portraying Marcellus, was a committed smoker, consuming 100 cigarettes a day during filming. A remarkable fact considering his portrayal of a character navigating a transformative quest for redemption in the context of ancient Rome. Interestingly, despite the film's religious narrative, Burton, in real life, held atheist views showing a disconnect between his personal beliefs and the compelling story of faith and self-discovery depicted on screen. This incongruity adds a layer of complexity to Burton's captivating performance, where he skillfully blends conviction and vulnerability. The strategic reuse of film sets and the paradox of Burton's personal beliefs versus his on-screen portrayal contribute to the multifaceted legacy of the robe. These behind-the-scenes details offer a unique perspective on the making of a cinematic masterpiece that continues to resonate in popular culture. In 1968, The Robe made its television debut on ABC during Easter weekend, garnering significant attention for its unique broadcast. Airing at an early hour to cater to family audiences, the telecast featured just one commercial break, sponsored by Ford Motor Co. With over half of American homes with TV sets tuning in, the film reached a broad audience, solidifying its place in cinematic history. Notably, despite its acclaim in the realm of motion picture music, Alfred Newman's powerful film score went unrecognized by the Motion Picture Academy's Music Branch Award. While Newman received an Oscar that night for a different project, the oversight led to the resignation of Franz Waxman, a distinguished film composer and Oscar winner himself. Ironically, when tasked with scoring the Robe's sequel, Demetrius and the Gladiators, Waxman insisted on adapting Newman's original themes, highlighting the enduring impact of the Robe's musical legacy. The film's journey from a groundbreaking television broadcast to the nuanced world of film scoring reveals the multifaceted influence and legacy of the Robe, transcending its initial cinematic release. 
Richard Burton's involvement in the robe was not without its share of drama. Before the film's release, he engaged in a heated argument with 20th Century Fox studio chief Darrow F. Zanuck. This clash ultimately led Burton to make a pivotal decision. He chose to return to London's West End Theatre District instead of staying in Hollywood. The tension surrounding Burton's departure from Hollywood didn't stop there. Following the movie's release, accusations were hurled at Burton, labeling him as a wooden film actor. This criticism became a lingering shadow throughout his career impacting the way he was perceived in the film industry. Interestingly, behind the scenes, there was another noteworthy aspect connected to the robe's production. Albert Maltz, the film's co-screenwriter, faced the consequences of the infamous Hollywood blacklist. Until the recent DVD and Blu-ray versions, Maltz's screen credit was omitted. However, a cooperative program between the Writers Guild and studios eventually led to the restoration of numerous blacklisted writers' credits, including Maltz, bringing a measure of justice to the overlooked contributors. These behind-the-scenes conflicts and controversies add layers to the narrative of the robe, giving insight into the challenges faced by its cast and crew. Despite the film's enduring legacy and impact on popular culture, the off-screen events highlight the complex dynamics that shaped its production and the subsequent careers of those involved. In The Robe, released in 1953, Richard Burton, aged 27 at the time, took on the role of Marcellus Gallio. Despite his youth, Burton delivered a compelling performance, infusing the character with a nuanced blend of conviction and vulnerability. Interestingly, the producers initially contemplated casting Lawrence Olivier and aging the character, adding a layer of what-if to the film's casting dynamics. One noteworthy aspect of the film's musical score is the reuse of Ernst Toch's Hallelujah Chorus, previously employed by Alfred Newman in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the robe, Newman revisits this powerful piece during the scene where Marcellus and his group of Christians rescue Demetrius from Emperor Caligula's Praetorian prison. The strategic use of familiar music adds a layer of continuity and emotional resonance to the film's narrative. These behind-the-scenes choices shed light on the creative decisions that shape the robe, from casting considerations to the deliberate reuse of a poignant musical piece. The interplay between casting decisions and musical choices highlights the meticulous craftsmanship that contributed to the film's enduring impact on popular culture. The robe's journey from casting dilemmas to musical nuances reveals the intricacies that define its legacy, showcasing the thoughtfulness that went into crafting this cinematic masterpiece. As the cinematic curtain falls on this timeless masterpiece, it leaves behind an indelible tapestry of emotions and musings. The Robe, a cinematic symphony crafted in 1953, transcends the boundaries of time, inviting you to embark on a reflective journey into the depths of your own cinematic soul. Have you ever found yourself lost in the ethereal glow of ancient Rome, walking the cobblestone streets with the characters who waltz through this cinematic marvel? Perhaps the sweeping melodies of the score linger in the corridors of your mind, weaving an intimate connection between your present and the celluloid past. The Robe isn't just a film. It's a gateway to a realm where the echoes of the past resonate with the whispers of your own narrative. Now, pause for a moment and let the sepia tone memories surface. Can you feel the warmth of nostalgia wash over you? Whether it's the haunting performances, the lavish set designs, or the profound narrative arcs, the robe has a unique ability to etch itself into the recesses of your cinematic consciousness. Your connection with this cinematic gem is personal, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. As you bid adieu to the characters who have become companions on this celluloid expedition, I invite you to share your cherished memories, your contemplations, and the emotions stirred by this cinematic opus. In the realm of the robe, every viewer becomes a storyteller. Unearth those narratives within you and let them dance in the spotlight. Your thoughts are not just echoes in the vast expanse of cyberspace. They are the continuation of a collective tale spun across generations. Thank you for immersing yourself in the allure of the robe, for allowing its magic to weave seamlessly into the fabric of your memories. Your time and reflections are the cornerstones of this cinematic dialogue. Until our narratives intertwine once more, revel in the cinematic echoes that linger in the corridors of your imagination.